Are we good? We're good? We're Yay! We're waiting. We're waiting. People will show up eventually. <laughs> Get all my pieces together here. We can talk about it. So welcome, welcome. Can everything set up? Okay. Can you see this little guy okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. He's the cute part, so. <laughs> Try to get everything. A lot of pieces here. There we go. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. I'm glad you're here. Welcome back if you've been with us before. Welcome if you, it's your first time. We've been doing this for a while. I think this is maybe week four, five, something like that. Um, we've been doing Sew Together Tuesday um, live from my studio here in Los Angeles. I'm here with my partner, Hawk. He's the film guy. So if you have any questions, he will be the one to read, you, read the questions to me. So feel free to post your questions. I'm happy to answer them. Um, and please leave a comment with your city and your state. And I'd love to hear what you've been doing, what you've been working on during um, this lockdown. If you're locked out in your house too, like we are, um, I've had lots of projects going on. I finished a quilt this week, but it's in the laundry, so I can't show you yet, but maybe next week. Um, been working on some other projects. and I'd love to hear what you've been working on as well, okay? So leave your city and state. We will draw a winner at the end. So you'll win a little kit to make your own um, little jelly bean pillow. And that's what we're working on today. All right. So make sure you leave those comments. Um, and like I said, leave any questions that you've got. Um, so today we're working on this little guy, which is the little chick pattern from McKay Manor Musers Jelly Bean Faces Pillow Barnyard Buddies Jelly Bean is what they call it. So here's the pattern. Okay. This is the pattern. And she has a whole bunch of these that are um, variations on a theme. So they're all this basic shape with different animals that you create with them. So this is the one that has little barnyard animals. I also have the one somewhere that I put away, it looks like, um, that's the mythical beast. And it has like a unicorn and a Yeti and all this sort of stuff. She has a bunch of different ones. So check them out. You can find all of her patterns at mckaymanormusers.com. All right, and Ellen will probably put that up in the comments so that you can click a link. Most of her patterns have PDF versions, including this one, okay? So this is what we're doing today, and we're gonna do this little chick guy, obviously. Worked out pretty well, okay? So this one I'm doing has, we've used a couple of different kinds of fabric. So this one is called Rose Cuddle, all right? Rose Cuddle is one that you've probably seen. It's got all these little swirly bits in it, okay? And that's what causes, that's the little roses that we're talking about. We have it in a variety of fabrics. I was gonna show you, here's another one. A bunch of different colors. So you can see the roses on here pretty well too. All right, so this is a great one, super fun. Uh, this one, all of our embossed stuff or these that have the designs in them, these are all heat set. So this one, I wanna let you know that this is one that when you wash and dry it, those roses will sort of um, release a little bit. They won't be as tight, it'll just be fluffier. If you wash and dry it in high heat, you'll end up with, um, It'll really untwirl, but it's like longer and soft. So either way, it won't lose the softness of the fabric, but it will, those, those roses will loosen up just a little bit when you wash them, just so you know. So this is actually, oh look, I have a little green left over on this guy now. Um, so you, just so you know, it's a great one for this project because this isn't something that's gonna be washed a bunch. Um, so it'll keep those roses really well. All right, where did I get this? In there, we'll shove it back. Okay, so um, so Rose Cuddle is one that we have, like I said, in a bunch of different colors. I don't even know how many, maybe Ellen can tell us, um, but a bunch of them, it's a very common one. It's really fun to use, I really like it, and it gives sort of a, um, like a feathery texture to this project. So if you don't have Rose Cuddle or you're looking for something else, you could absolutely use just the regular Cuddle 3, which is the flat cuddle. Um, you can absolutely use that and it works just fine. I made a uh, part of the cow yesterday trying it out and I did that with Cuddle 3 and it worked fine. Um, and then I realized I didn't have any brown for his nose, so I stopped. 
so that was sad. But um, I tried to make <laughs> I tried to make another version. So the cuddle three works just fine. Um, you can use that. Today we're using the rose cuddle. I've got I pick a little mallard off of his face now. Um, so this is the cuddle three. This is cuddle three, and so is this these little guys. Okay, so this is the rose cuddle, and these are just cuddle three. The applique is easiest to use when we're doing any applique. It's easiest to use the cuddle three. So that's what we've done on here, and then it's fun to use this as a texture. If you're using anything else, you want to make sure that your texture is not too terribly long. Um, otherwise, it starts to um, be a little bit harder to applique on. Okay. All right. So I've got the pattern. Let me show you. I'm gonna move this guy over here so I can move things just around a little bit. So I've got my pieces and I've got it partly set up so we could just start working before too terribly long. So he didn't have to work through too much with me. Okay. So what I did, the first thing is I cut out the pattern for the pillow front and back. Okay. And it comes like this. Now, if you've watched any of the videos before, you know that I like to cut things out one layer. I don't like to double it up. So I don't want to actually put a fold here. I want to cut the whole thing. So what I did is I just traced it out and then I flipped it and traced it again so that this becomes my whole jelly bean face. So one, I know how big it's going to be. And two, I can lay this out and cut it. Okay. So that's what I did. I've got one cut and I'm going to cut out the other one. All right. So let me move some stuff. So I use my pattern and I just trace this on here, okay, with the, um, just a Sharpie pen, all right? At this point, it won't matter that I've used a Sharpie pen because all of these are gonna go into the seam allowance. So depending, it doesn't matter how I cut it. Uh, and it'll be the same thing like we've talked about in other videos where you can sort of see that edge, which actually helps you find the edge uh, because you can, the fuzz comes past it, okay? Because I'm gonna cut this with my blade, all right? So I'm gonna show you how I cut that. So this is when you could absolutely use your little scissors and just go ahead and cut this, like start it. And then you're just gonna put the scissors right underneath the edge and just snip. Okay, so if you don't have the little fancy blade, this works totally fine. You can cut it with just regular scissors and cut it big. What's gonna happen is, so if you see on here, this is an area that I cut it with the blade. So it doesn't cut all the way through. So what happens is if you cut it with a rotary, all of these bits will come right off, which means you have a lot more fuzz. You just vacuum it up and you're good to go. Okay, I'm gonna cut it with the blade because it's a little less messy and, uh, and I like it. So. so I'm just gonna drag this right along. This is the little Ulfa blade. Okay, and it has the snap off, um, snap off blades on there. So you can see those little lines for the snap off. All right, I'm gonna cut two left here. This is it. You can buy refills, which I have, so I will refill this guy. Okay, I'm just gonna drag this along that edge. So the key with using this blade is really the, um, the tension that you keep on it. So as you see, I'll move my hands as I come along, okay, to hold it down nice and flat as I'm sewing. Doesn't catch all of those um, fibers, I guess, that go in between, so you'll see I have to go back and catch them sometimes, which is fine. So I'm gonna drag all the way around this guy. So that's what I'm doing with this finger is sort of pulling it back so that I can cut it and then I'm gonna pull it apart, move it and cut it again. Okay, so like I said, this is totally doable with scissors or a rotary cutter, the little scissors, whichever way you wanna do it. I'm just trying to do it the least messy way for me right now. Okay, all right. So just keep on chucking right along here. Do, 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 do. Chugging, chugging, chugging. Okay, so um, we've talked about it before. Like I use this blade when I'm doing all sorts of things, um, including these little bits. You'll notice that it's a little bit harder because there's not a lot to hold on to. Um, so if you're struggling with those corners and that sort of thing, just use your scissors. It's all good. Okay, so now I'll take this off. So those little parts, I'm just gonna, they just, like little spider webs, sort of. They didn't cut all the way through. So I'll go and trim them. This, I've noticed if you pull these, you'll see there's little bits here. So where I start to pull is where it will start to wanna, I don't know, not cause a run, but it starts to pucker it weirdly. So make sure you don't pull those too hard. All right, okay. So I'm gonna set that to the side. So now I've got my piece, I've got my front piece. I already had cut my back piece. 
okay? And then I've got this piece. So this is, the way the pattern is written, she has you cut a 40 by 60 inch strip that you're gonna use for this part of the little pillow, okay? So it's this little edge. <laughs> little fuzz everywhere, okay? So this little edge here that gives it body this direction, this piece is four by 60 is what she has you cut it. I found, that I don't particularly like to sew things around to find out where they match again and then sew the seam together. That's how she does it. It totally works, okay? But what I wanted to do is I wanted to find out how long that strip actually needs to be. So I'm gonna show you how I did that because it's kind of weird. Um, and I'm just gonna use this one. So this is the one that I drew out and then I, um, I put my pieces on and laid it out so I could see how it wanted to go. In the pattern, she only does a small version of this, so you can't really see it big, and I wanted to do it life-size. But what I did is I took this little fancy ruler, okay, which is actually for apparel sewing, and so it's for measuring like the, the crotch seam is what this is for, so you can totally measure that. But it works really well because I can bend it, and so what I did is I measured the pattern along here, and I just bent it to fit the shape so that I could get it to be the same size. Okay, and then I could measure it out, and what I found out is that it needed to be about 20 inches. So it's 19 and a half inches all the way around if I measure the seam allowance, okay? So I measured it for you. So then what I did is I cut a strip that's 40 inches long, okay? So this piece here, is 40 inches. So I'm, that's a little secret. Now you know, you can write it down in your pattern, is it was 40 inches. Because all of the jelly bean faces are the exact same size, you just use different fabric and different placement to make the different animals, this will totally work for all of them. So you'll have this piece, okay? So this is our jelly bean face, okay? And then four by 40 inches will be that strip that goes around. And that's universal for all of the pieces in this pattern. And I think all of her jelly bean faces are actually the same size, okay? Does that make sense? Is everybody clear on that? No big questions like, what did you just do? Okay, all right. So I'm gonna put those aside. So now I've got these pieces and now I need to make my face pieces. Okay, so I've cut a couple of these out. You'll find the pattern pieces are in there. They're a quarter inch uh, seam allowance. I just trace them and then cut them out, as you can see. Okay, I don't care, again, about the ink showing because it's just gonna, um, it's gonna come off later, or be in the seam allowance later. So I've got those pieces, and I've got the little tail. Okay, so I cut all of these guys, and what I did is I traced these, then I took them off, then I cut it. And I actually cut these, pretty sure, yep, if I look at them, I can tell these I cut with the rotary cutter, but I trace them first, then I use the pattern weights, and then I cut around it, okay? So if I try to cut it with this on here, it's a lot harder, so I just trace it and then take that off, all right? So then I've got my other pieces. So these are the applique pieces, and we get a lot of questions about doing applique with cuddle. So this I use the Quilter Select Apple Web Plus to remember the name. That's what it's called. So this is Quilter Select, Apple Web Plus. You can also use Soft Fuse or um, Wonder Under. There's a bunch of different ones that you could use. Um, this is the one that I like the best. Um, Soft Fuse, I feel like, is um, really comparable. So if you have that, it works basically the same way. It's a paper-backed, double-sided fusible. So it works really, really well. It's thin enough that it's just a quick touch of the iron and it fuses to it. So you're not spending a lot of time pressing, okay, which is what we want to avoid because this is a polyester and it's plush. So I've ironed this on here. So I did that beforehand because what you want to do is you want to trace this out, iron it on, let it sit for a few seconds, and then it's going to cool, okay? So for me, the trick with getting the um, double-sided fusible to adhere well is to actually let it cool off. So at this point, I'm just going to cut this out, okay? And I'm just going to use my scissors and cut along that pencil line. So if my tracing isn't perfect, it's fine because I can fix it at this point and make it nice and smooth, okay? And when we're doing the applique, we want to make sure that those edges are actually kind of crisp. So any of these areas, I'm actually going to go back over this and cut off that fuzz. So normally I want to leave the fuzz. For applique, I always cut it off. So one of the things that I found is you end up getting these little bits on here, and if I sort of flick it, it gets all those little bits off. Okay, so now I have a peak. 
Okay, so now I've got my beak pieces. I would do the eyes the same way. I just cut out a pair already, so we didn't have to watch me do the same thing twice. Okay, so here are my eyes, cut those out. Those are good to go. All right, so now we'll just clean up our mess. <laughs> That's where it goes, I'll vacuum it up later. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces here ready to go. All right, ready, we're good? Okay. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to put this um and this aside okay and i'm going to sew some of these pieces together so that's what we're going to do is we're going to sew all of these pieces um together to keep them in check basically because it's easy to start to lose pieces and i don't want to do that so i'm going to sew these together and then we're going to sew those onto place and then we'll do the applique all right so um we'll come on around and come to the sewing machine Okay, so I've got my sewing machine set up as usual. Um, I've got the walking foot on. I switched it to a 9014 stretch needle. I've got polyester thread, and I'm gonna leave it at a 2.5 stitch length because I want it to be a little bit tighter since I'm gonna stuff it. I want those um, seams to really hold, okay? So I'm gonna pin these, but just a little bit. I don't actually need a ton of pins, so I'm just gonna do it right here and pin these guys together. Okay, and I'm gonna use my little stiletto to guide it. Okay, so if these don't match perfectly, you're all right, because we've got some, some seam allowance there, but we're gonna be careful, because it's only a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So if you make a little mistake and you miss the edge, we'll check it, and then you could go back over and just stitch it down again. Hopefully that won't happen this time, because these are little pieces. But if you joined us for the uh, the elephant last week. You saw that happened a lot. The quarter inch seam allowance is just smaller than um, than preferable when working with cuddle, but it's actually needed for things like this. So it's sort of a you know six of one half dozen of another. But I found that the the quarter inch is doable. If it's much smaller than that, I'll sew it larger and then trim it down. If the pattern calls for smaller than that. Okay. So I've got some pins in there. I'm gonna grab my little stiletto in case I need it, okay? And I'm gonna put this down so that my needle goes into the fabric. So I'm not starting before the fabric. So a lot of times when we sew, we wanna start it back here and then the fabric will work underneath the foot. But with cuddle, it tends to wanna suck it down a little bit if we do that. So I'm gonna start with it underneath the foot, okay? Here's my, here's my quarter inch line on my foot. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that one, okay? I'm going to just sew a little bit, do some back stitching, and then I'm just going to sew in a circle. Well, not exactly a circle, but you know, curves. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do around these curves is I'm going to have to pick this up and move things a little bit. If I use this stiletto, I can sort of guide it a little. Okay. And then I'll do the same thing and pick it up and move it a little. The key is to not move it a ton because you want to keep those edges pretty, pretty smooth in the curve. Okay, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to eyeball it to where I can pivot and stay at about a quarter of an inch. All right. So we're just going to keep going around. You'll notice I slow down a bunch at those corners because they're a little bit, um, yeah, it's a little bit harder to do. We want to get them nice and smooth. Okay, and get it to work underneath. So I've got the, um, the digital dual feed here on my um, baby lock crescendo, but you would be normally using a walking foot unless you have a brother or a baby lock. They're the only ones that have this, this style of, of foot. Okay. So I'm back stitch here, cut my thread, and then I'm, I can see all my seam allowance here is fine. I'll turn it over and check, and it looks like it's fine there too, okay? So I'm gonna put this aside, I'll grab my pins, and then we'll do the next one. So this one is a little bit funkier. Um, this is the, the wattle that goes underneath its chin, okay? So I'm gonna do a little bit, um, like less deep pinning. So a pin just along the edges a little bit more, sort of like what we were talking about before with um, this being a smaller piece and with the curves is I can use these pins to steer it just a little bit, but also it doesn't, we don't want it to go too far into the fabric. 
because it becomes obnoxious. Okay. And if you notice that your fabric isn't holding flat, you can do the pinning back and forth. Okay. So we will keep pinning, keep pinning. So you can see that this wants to curl just the tiniest bit here. Okay, you can see it's not laying perfectly flat. And that's okay, but if we wanted to, we could go back and like this one could be over here. And it will help it lay flatter, if you can see that. It totally makes a difference, okay? So if you're struggling a little bit with it not laying flat and it makes it kind of harder to sew for you, pin from the other side too, okay? That makes a difference. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing. So the way that this is, it kind of curves in here and I don't necessarily want it to curve in the seam allowance. So I'm actually gonna start up here and then just go back and then I'll, and then I'll follow the seam allowance the rest of the way. But for me, that extra little curve at the beginning, I don't really need it. Okay, I can see that wants to suck it under, under so I'm gonna pull this up. Okay. I'm going to use my stiletto and I'm going to get it to go through. There we go. Okay, so it's sort of just paying attention to what your fabric is doing and fixing it before it becomes a real problem. Because it's frustrating. I'm, if you've done any tiny piecing, that's what happens too, is it gets sucked into your machine. So if you have a single needle plate, you can absolutely use that here. So if your machine tends to have more of a problem with it, you could switch that to the single needle plate and then it can't, it can't suck down in there because there's nowhere for it to go. Okay, and I'm just guesstimating on where my edge is because I can't see it. So I'm just making up some curves, you know, I'll figure it out. Back stitch just a little, and then we'll take it out. All right. Okay, oh, that's a really silly one, but that's all right, we'll figure it out. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip some little bits in here to make this turn. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing to here, because this little part, so these curves we don't really have to clip, but this one we need to so that it will split apart. Okay, so when it comes inside, it'll do that. So make sure that you're not clipping through your, through your threads, but actually um, clip right up to them, okay? So these parts here, I don't have to, you can clip out, um, you can clip out the little Vs. I don't particularly like to, but I will cut down the seam allowance so there's less bulk in it. Okay, so really it's, you know, whichever one you want. You could leave it there too, it's fine. But sometimes I'll do this because I like a little bit smaller seam allowance at those corners, okay? So now I'm gonna turn this inside out. Okay, and you can see we used white thread on the red fabric. And you can also see that on this side, we can't see it at all. Okay, so we're not, I didn't change the thread at all, as you noticed. Okay, no big deal for this. All right, and that little notch that we did here is what makes that pop out so nicely. I'm gonna do the same thing here. This one's a little bit funkier. Let's see if I can grab. I want my other stiletto. I don't see it. All right, so we're using a little porcupine quill, quill instead. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, because this part, is a little bit difficult to get it to start shoving under because it's so little. Okay, so if I use something, I can push that out. All right, so even though I had that weird little jut on there, it's not gonna show, totally fine, it hides in there. Okay, so now we're gonna stick a little bit of um, poly in there, the polyfill. So I'm just gonna use my little quill here and pull some of that up. Okay, I like the way the stiletto works better, but it's, I think it's over on the machine. I can't see it right now. Okay, so just gonna pull some of that up and then I'm gonna take some polyfill and shove it in there. So today we're gonna use the regular, ta-da, just regular old polyfill that you've seen all over the place, okay? This one is a little bit denser and this pillow, um, when I use the royal silk, which is what I used in this one, I'd have to use a lot more to get it to be more solid because it's real squishy right now, real huggable, which is fine, but I wanted to see how this would work um, as well. So we're gonna use that today. Okay, mostly so I can see the difference between them. 
because uh, for me that's interesting. So I'm going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to shove it in here. Okay, and I'm not going to stuff it very much, but just enough so that it's not flat. All right. Um, the first one that I did, I stuffed a lot. Okay, so this one you can see I stuffed a bunch, and this I actually ended up having to take some of the stuffing out because I'd stuffed it even more, and then I couldn't sew it in here very well. So um, lessons learned. So don't stuff it too much. Okay, and then I come over here and I'm going to stuff the tiniest little bit in here and see if I can get this to sort of grab it. Shove it in there. Okay, a chopstick would probably work for this too. Or that, you know, tool that I really like that <laughs> is not sitting here right now. <laughs> okay. Things get moved in here because I actually, it's actually my sewing space. So when I'm not here teaching you guys how to work with cuddle, I'm sewing other cuddle and, and in the evenings I'm making quilts and doing all sorts of stuff. Okay, so things get moved. All right, so I've got that shoved in there. I'm going to try to shove that up just a little bit into the into the end, use my finger, get that in a little more, okay, just work it in there, okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this so that this area at the end is flat, okay, so I shove that up a bit, it can work itself back out later, but right now I want to keep it further away, at least like a half an inch from the end, and I'm going to do the same thing here, okay, is that I want to shove this in here, and then I'm going to pin it so that that is staying further away, okay, and that will help me sew it, because when that stuffing comes up too close, it gets really hard to sew, and my foot can't go over it as well, okay, so I'm going to pin this so that it's a this is like close to an inch away. This one is more like a half an inch away. And I'm just going to go stitch these closed. All right. So all that does is just help me uh, when I'm sewing this in later. Okay. To keep it where I want it to be. All right. So I'm sewing that at my, my quarter inch. Let's see if I can get that pin out there. Okay, so this is basically my quarter inch. It's a little bit shy because I'm hoping if I sew it there that it will hide it when I um, do the next part. Okay, and I sew this in. Okay, so you can see I have the one pin still in so it's nice and flat up to here and then it's stitched down here. And I'm going to leave this pin in. I'm going to move it just slightly but I'm going to keep all of that stuff shoved upward because I want to keep that out of the way when I'm sewing. All right, I'm going to do the same thing here. Sew across the bottom. You can do a little zigzag across here too and that works really nicely. I just didn't want to change my settings yet. Okay, all right. Okay, so now I've got these sewn. I'm going to put this pin back in here to keep the stuffing back. Okay, I'm going to go here and then I've got my tail to do. Okay, my tail is white so the white thread would be perfect for it. And it's a little bit bigger so it's kind of easier to sew. And then we're going to do the same thing with that and sew that in. Okay. So the tail, uh, when I did it on the other one, and I think this is the way she has you do it in the pattern too, is that I did it so that um, the tail gets sewn onto the back of it. So we'll do those in two separate steps. Okay, and then as I come around here on this corner, I'm going to grab it with my stiletto and make it kind of turn a little bit more. Okay, and now I can see that my seam allowance is going to get a little small there, so I'm going to actually just lift the foot and turn it. Make sure that I don't come off the edge. If I do, if I came back and I realized like I'd just gotten way too close, you can totally come back and just re-sew it. Okay, so then come back over here, do a little back stitch, take it out. There we go. All right. So now we've got this guy. I've got the same thing, and I'm going to take this and just do a little clip here to make sure that that'll turn nicely. So I didn't cut a V. I just cut a little, a little snip in it so that his tail will come around down just a little bit. Okay. And it's actually going to go up just a little bit. All right. We'll do the same thing. Stuff a little bit of 
the polyfill in there. Okay, get that in there. Do the same thing here where I pin it. Keep that polyfill back away from my seam. And then I'm gonna stitch that closed. All right, so then we'll have all of these pieces. And then we can work on the uh, actual applique. Okay. All right. And I don't need to backstitch that because I'm just really holding it um, for when I sew it later. All right, so I don't need to make sure that that seam is extra, extra good. All right, so now I've got my face, I've got my pieces. So here's my, my tail, which is gonna go onto the back. So I'm gonna put it over here with my other piece. All right, this is the waddle, I think they called it, and the comb, I think those are the right words. Okay, so now what I can do is I can use my little pattern that I made where I traced out that whole piece that I used to, to actually cut out the pattern piece. Then I traced the pieces that I'm going to put on there and figured out where I wanted them. So the um, beak needs to be centered, so I figured out where that would be. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this. I'm going to use it first to put my waddle and my comb on because I want to make sure that those are basically in the right place. Okay, so I can put this on here, then I can find under here, I've labeled it, okay? So you could put this on either way in the pattern. She calls for it going this direction, okay? Which means that I'm gonna sew it on this direction. So then I'm just gonna look under here, make sure that that's pretty much centered and pin it on. Okay, and I'm gonna leave that pin in there because I really do wanna keep that stuffing back. Okay, so you'll notice that I pinned it a little bit sideways and that's just so I can hold down more area. So it's sort of at an angle and so I can hold down more area when I sew that on. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing with the waddle and I'm gonna put that on basically where it was. I'll look at the picture. Yeah, I can't really tell which way it goes. Maybe like that. Okay, so then I'm gonna put that on where I marked it on the pattern piece, flip that over, and then pin it in place. Okay, so now I can sew these on, and so these will stay in place now too, all right? So then they can just live there until I sew the other part together. All right, so now I'm gonna put my foot down. So you can see when I have kept all of this flat over here, my machine can sew over this better because that's all flat where it goes underneath the foot. Okay. So I'm gonna sew this down and then I'll be able to check. So on this side, I can see that I did at just under a quarter of an inch, but then I can look on this side and I can say, okay, this, this will catch. If I do it at a quarter of an inch, it'll be fine. Sometimes what happens is because of all this fluff and you can't really see what you're sewing, this will end up really short and then I know I need to take a bigger seam allowance next time, but this will work out okay. So I'm gonna flip it around and do the other side and do the same thing. Okay, put my needle down, foot up, so I can get that, that pin out. Okay, it was in there too deep and I couldn't, I couldn't get it. So I wanna, I wanna not sew over it, but I wanna get it started while the pin is still in there. All right, so now I'll take that out. I can do the same thing, check this side. It looks like that seam allowance is just fine, okay? Good on either side. I'm gonna leave these pins still in here Okay, because I wanna keep that stuffing back because when I sew around this whole thing, I'm gonna need the same thing to happen. Okay, so now I've got to put my face on. So I've got, this one only has the, um, the three pieces. Okay, so I've got the eyes and the little beak, right? Yes, okay, <laughs> make sure I'm doing it right. Okay, so this is, in the pattern, she just tells you to put it on there. You can put them on there however you want. So all of these pieces are all of these little faces. They aren't, um, there are no placement guidelines for you to do it. You just get to figure it out yourself, which is fine because it lends to some flexibility. But I wanted to at least make sure that they were even on either side. So that's why I drew mine out. And you can use this a couple of different ways. So I'm gonna show you one way that I have done this um, that is 
definitely sort of weird, but works for me. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out his eyeballs on my pattern. Okay. I found I found your uh, your paper scissors. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Last time I was like, I have to use my good scissors, and I thought that was a terrible example. So I found I found paper scissors. Okay, and I'm just going to cut these out. And what that's going to do is give me a little bit of a template to put these down as. All right. Coming in a circle is not easy. Okay, so I've got the one eyeball done. So what I want is it to be big enough that this will sit in there and that I can take this off. Okay, so I cut it, if you didn't notice, I cut it slightly outside of that line. Okay, so then I'm going to cut these guys out. I can get my hand in there. There we go. All right. So while I cut these out, does anybody have any questions? If you got any, now's the time to ask. Okay. Leave your city, state. Tell me what you've been working on. I need some inspiration, guys. Not really. I've got plenty of things to do, but I do like to hear what other people are working on. And at the end, I'll tell you what I'm working on for next week, too. Okay. one's at least a little bit easier. Straight lines. Okay, so I got that one done, and then I got one more that I'm going to cut around his eyeballs with. Okay, and so this is not in the pattern. Just so you know, this is my own weird way of figuring it out, and mostly because I just like the placement to be even, and it frustrates me when it's not. So, um, I wanted to figure out a way to do it. I will show you another way in just a second that you can do this. Um, if you were with us when we did the Kimber Bear, so that was three weeks ago, two weeks ago, um, that we did the little Kimber Bear, we traced the pattern piece, or we traced the, the layout onto the Sulky, the water soluble stabilizer. So when we did the Kimber Bear, if you remember right, we took this out and then basically we put it over the pattern and traced it. And you can absolutely do that. We're going to use this later when we do the applique and we're not going to trace it out. But you could do that here. Instead of cutting these out, you can trace this. And then when you put it on your, on your face, you just line those up in the right places. Okay, so those are two different ways of making sure that your placement is correct. Um, the other thing you could do is just not care uh, and put it on however you want it to be. Okay, so I'm going to cut that off because we're going to need it. So again, this is the Sulky, um, their water-soluble stabilizer. from It's Solvi is the brand name for that, from Sulky. Okay, so this is for um, embroidery, and we're also going to use it for the applique. All right. All right, so I've got that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move some stuff around. Oh, there's my little folder. I was going to show you. I was like, I don't know what I did with that. This is what it is. So this is the other one. Okay. So this is the other pattern that she had that I was telling you is mythical, mythical beasts, the unicorn, the phoenix, and the, the yeti, werewolf, and dragon. Super cute. Okay. And I think she has at least two more variations on this theme. All right. So now I've got my little wool mat and I've got my face. Okay. So we always get questions about, so, or um, ironing on cuddle. Can you iron it? You can't iron on it. You're, it'll destroy it. All sorts of things get said about working with the cuddle and applique. You absolutely can iron on it, but you need to remember that it's a polyester. So you're going to use a, a, a lower heat level with it, and you're not going to press on it for very long. The biggest problem that I've noticed when working with cuddle is the holes that are in your iron. So if you leave those on there, especially like this is the small Aliso little travel iron, but the big ones have holes, big holes in them. And if you use those and you press those onto your cuddle, it'll actually set those into the cuddle until you wash it, and then they'll pop right out. Okay, so I'm going to show you my weird little trick for doing this. Okay, so what I do... 
So I'm going to flip those up as I put this pattern piece on and I can sort of see through the other side, make sure that it's pretty even, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pieces on there. So I've got these ironed on. So I'm going to pull off that fusible backing and you can see the fusible has stuck to here. One of the things that if you pull this off too soon, the fusible tends to stick to the paper and not to the fabric. So let that cool completely. All right, I'm going to pull that off and I'm going to figure out which way my nap is going. And I can see it all goes down. So I'm going to put it on here that same way. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. I'm going to get my other eyeball. I'm going to pull that up. Okay, same thing. I'm just going to pet it until I figure out which way it goes. Okay, because if I push it this way, it's wrong. This way is right. Okay, wrong, right. So it's going to go here. All right, so basically I just stick it in that little hole right there and it's right where I want it to be. Okay, same thing here. This is my beak. Okay, when I laid that on there, I made sure that it was right. Okay. Now we're just gonna stick that in there. Make sure that's nice and even. Okay, now I can press it. And there's a double thing with using this little paper thing, all right, is that it is like double pressing cloth and it will harm the fabric a little bit less, okay? Um, even if I get a little overzealous. Okay, so I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not ironing the paper to it. And I want to spend most of my time focusing on the actual applique and not just on this whole thing because I'm not trying to get the whole thing stuck down and I'm not even trying to press the whole thing. I'm really just trying to get my appliques to adhere. Okay, so now I can take this off. Should have stuck enough that I can come back in here it a little better okay let's stick just a little and then I'm going to move things just slightly so I can get them exactly where I want them that one's stuck a little more than I want it to be okay all right so now we're going to do it again I'm going to press and I don't like pressing long enough to get it to adhere really well so I'll get it to stick just a little bit and then I'm going to pin it in place Okay, so basically it helps me just get the alignment a little bit better, um, mostly because I can't trust myself to get it right. Okay, but the other thing that I found is we're gonna give this a shot. Okay, as I will pin this, try not to pin it to my, my board. Okay, I'm going to pin this in a few little places and then I'm going to turn it over and iron from the back. Okay, the other thing that you can do, which um, works pretty well when you're using that little, um, what do you call that? Like a masking thing, is, um, is that you can use the 505 spray on it. Okay, and then you can get these guys on there in the right places. Okay, so if I adhere it from the back, I feel a little less scared of pushing on it and getting the press uh, the heat through. So, like I said, I never worry too much about it, but I don't press it for too terribly long either. Okay, because it's heat set, heat will take it out, and so I don't want to I don't want to mess with it too much. Okay, but it's totally possible. Okay, and take this over here. You can see it hasn't messed up all of this. It's not like it's totally different. Um, so it's fine, it'll press, but I don't like to press for too long. So also I like these pins because I can press with them and they don't melt, okay? So um, if you press them from the front, they will, if you do it too hard, I promise. So do it from the back and you'll be fine. Okay, so now I've got these on here, now I need to stitch them onto his little face, all right? That little eye is off kilter, okay? So this is why I like, don't press it on there too hard because I just wanted to fudge that around just a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to go back over and I'm going to change the threads on my machine because I'm going to do his, let's do his eyes first. So I'm going to change it so that his, we have black thread on it. All right, because the um, eyes, we're going to do a blanket stitch. And if we do it with the white thread, you'll totally see it. 
and we don't want that to happen. So I tend not to change my thread for things, and I've, if you've been to any of my classes, I always say that I just use medium gray for everything, but it's not exactly true. I just use medium gray for almost everything. All right, so we're gonna do this again. Let's see if we can thread this. All right, I've got my reading glasses on hand just in case my little needle threader is, is broken. She said you might be offering up a good time to uh, talk about how, um, how often do you clean your machine when you're working with cuddle? I clean it pretty darn regularly. So um, I clean mine about once a week, but if you are sewing cuddle kind of like irregularly, like most people would, I just sew cuddle a lot. I would just clean it after you're done with your machine or when you're done with the project, but you should definitely be cleaning your machine once a month. Okay, so eat, whether you're working with Cuddle or anything else, you should definitely be cleaning your machine. Come on, little guy. Okay, it's important because what happens is in here, I have to change the, the bobbin, but in here, you end up getting a lot of fuzz. And yeah, we, we get in here and clean it out pretty often. But this will get full of, full of fuzz. And then behind this, so if you take all of this out, you'll get fuzz behind that. And that's whether you're working with Cuddle or just with cotton. Okay, so make sure that you're changing that. Um, you're not changing it necessarily, but getting in there and brushing it out. Okay, machines, this one uh, is a, a baby lock, like I said, and does not require oiling. Most machines will require some oiling. So make sure that you look at your owner's manual and see what it says to do. All right, I know the Bernina I have, um, they make it very clear where you, where you oil and how much, which is great. Okay. All right, so now I've got my little guy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start doing the stitching just past this pin. Okay, so that way I know that when I come back around, I need to sew just past the pin to finish. It's really easy to sort of get lost in it because you can't particularly see what you're doing. Um, so make sure that you have some sort of a mark as to where you're starting and stopping. Okay, so I'm gonna change this not to there. I'm gonna change it to my blanket stitch. Okay, so if we come over here, you can see on my machine, so it lists here that it's a blanket stitch that I'm doing, okay, which is this stitch here. All right, so you've probably seen this one done. It's really good for applique. I'm gonna make it a little narrower, okay? And the length I'm gonna keep the same because basically the, the width is these little guys that come out into the fabric and I don't want those to go so far out because I'm dealing with a small piece. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it smaller. You can definitely uh, do some testing and see what you think and then just go from there. So that's usually what I'll do is I'll try a couple of pieces and see what I want, okay? Did I just unthread it? I did. Okay, pulling that needle back up, all that. Let me try it again, guys. That's what happens. I cut my thread too short after I threaded it. As I've said before, that needle threader is the first thing I'm get taking care of when I get to leave the house again. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this is gonna go over and forward and backward and then over. Oh, I forgot to put the applique stuff on. Okay, we're gonna do one eye on, one eye without the sulky. See, this is what I tend to do. But if you do it with the, with the sulky stuff on there with the tearaway, it actually will come out better, but you'll get a good example of how we do it both ways, okay? But it isn't absolutely necessary either, okay? So one of the things that you'll have to do is move this a lot. Okay, because sewing in a tight little circle can be hard. So when I'm doing um, applique, if I have that tearaway on there, it'll definitely work better. All of this little fuzz won't be happening. Um, but the other thing is it makes it a little bit more stable to sew. So if you want to do, if you don't have that, what you can do is put uh, a stabilizer behind it so that it will make it a little bit easier. When I'm doing bigger applique pieces, I definitely use a stabilizer behind it because it will need it. Okay, because it's a knit fabric. Okay, so I can feel my little waddle thing got stuck back there under my walking foot. Okay. 
Okay. And just twist all the way around. So what's happening is that little, the white comes over because of those little roses and sort of hides the edge. Okay, so I'm doing a blanket stitch on here. You can also do, in the pattern, she tells you to do a, um, just a straight stitch all the way around. Maybe we'll try that on one of them too and show you what that looks like. Okay, just so you can see the variation because there isn't one necessarily right way to applique with. It's kind of, um, oh, look at that. I just came right off. Um, so I'm gonna do a little lock stitch right here and then I'll cut my thread. Okay, so there's not one way of doing it that's best. What I meant to show you was the sulky stuff because this is where I get frustrated because it's easy to come off the edge and so then I can sort of, I can fudge it, okay? But let's do it with the tearaway and I'll show you what the difference is. We'll do this eye over here. Oh, his, little, his little face came back up. Okay, so I'm pin that down. Okay, now I'm gonna take this over there. I'm gonna repin these so I don't lose it. And I'm gonna do it on top of the tear away so that I can get those out when it's underneath the machine. Okay, did everybody just have a good laugh at me? They should have, that was, that was silly. Okay, I knew that was the wrong way to do it. Now you guys know too, okay? So it really depends on the, um, the fabric too because I found that the rose cuddle tends to do that more, that'll come up more than say if I were just to do cuddle three on cuddle three. Okay, so now I've got the tear away on the top. I can see it a little bit better. So now I'm gonna switch it to a, just a zigzag. So you guys can see that. So normally I do a five five zigzag and I don't really wanna do that this time because a five five zigzag is just, um, is just too big, okay? So let's see if we can go to two and we'll do three wide. We'll see how this works, okay? I think that's gonna work, but I'm gonna do this just the tiniest bit smaller. Okay. Okay, so now with the silky on there with the, the tear away, I can see that edge come up just a little bit. So you can see, you guys can't see it as well as I can, but this edge is much clearer in here um, because, oh, I know I can change my foot. Um, hold on guys, I'm figuring something out. Okay, so I wanna take this guy off. Okay, come on. There we go, oh, I have to take the needle out. Darn it, I really don't want to. Okay, I'm gonna take this guy out. It's gonna mess up my zigzag, but I wanna show you guys this, okay? Oh, look at that, Oof. Okay, so I'm gonna get in here. Let's get into my drawer. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so this is my other foot for my dual feet. Oh my goodness, guys. Sorry. All right, so now I'm gonna put this guy in here. Come around here, lift this up. Put it down, click it in. Okay, now you guys can see, whew. There, thanks. Um, so this edge here stage is much, much clearer with the tear away on top of it because what happens, you, I don't know if you could see it before, but this white stuff will curl over the top. With the tear away on there, it can't do that, which is awesome. Okay, so now I'm gonna stick this in here. Now I'll be able to see my circle better anyway. Okay, let's see if we can get this one to be a little bit better. Okay. So now I'm just gonna come right along here and I'm gonna stitch my, my zag is gonna go down right off the edge, okay? I can see it's starting to get a little off. So I'm gonna just turn it and keep on going. Okay, don't wanna go too fast and get off, okay. So like I said, you can do the, um, the zigzag, the blanket stitch, either one of those works, okay? And then we'll do it on the beak, I'll show you with the straight stitch. I'll show you how that looks, because in the pattern, that's how she tells you to do it, which all of them work, it's really just personal preference as to which one you wanna do, okay? 
So you, I can see right here, this little, that little white wants to come up. I'm gonna see if I can get them to, to go away. There we go. Yeah, it just helps me see better and it doesn't get it caught down in there, weird. Okay, so now I can see where I've ended a lot better too. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a little lock stitch and cut my thread. All right, so now we'll take that up. So I won't tear this off until I'm done, but you can see that this circle is definitely better than that circle. That's yeah, pretty, pretty crazy right there. Okay, so this one, it's a little bit better. Ta-da! Oh, that's like a real circle, right? Okay, so now I will do it on his, um, his little beak, okay? So I'm gonna put him back here. I'm gonna put this over it. Okay, and then I'm gonna change my thread. So I'm just gonna put this back in place, pin it down. Okay, from the top side so that I don't have to try to do that later while I'm sewing it. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna change my thread again because it's gonna show I would like it to be right because even like we're gonna do the top stitch right now and it will definitely show, but at least with the yellow, it sort of blends a little bit better, okay? And this one, I'm gonna switch back to the white thread at the bottom. I'm not gonna bother to have a bobbin with the yellow because it's such a little amount of stitching and the white will just sort of blend with it okay. Okay, so the black, you'll notice I changed the black bobbin because I wanted that to, to match. Okay, so move that. Okay, pop that out. And now I'm gonna put the white bobbin back in. Then I'll go grab my thread. Come on, there it is. All right, bring that up and then I can put this back in there. All right, so now we're gonna put the beak in. Okay, and I'm gonna start at the bottom, like on the bottom edge here instead of the top edge because I think it might be a slightly less visible. Okay, and then I'm gonna change this to a straight stitch. So now, if I put my foot down, where my needle is gonna come in, am I gonna lose my thread? Yep, dang it, I do that every time. You would think I would learn, but no, I cut the thread short every time. <laughs> oh, look at that, I nailed it, guys, I nailed it. All right, <laughs> okay, so what I wanna do is get my thread to come in about an eighth of an inch from that edge, all right? So this edge is what I'm looking at here, and I want the thread to come in about an eighth of an inch from there, all right? So I see that that actually works okay, and that it's gonna bump up kind of to this edge. So that's what I'm gonna look, is at this side of my foot to make sure that my yellow is just before that so I can keep it fairly even. That's the hardest part of this to me, is trying to keep that even, okay? I'm gonna try, it's at a 2.5, we're gonna see for the stitch length, we're gonna see how that works. Okay, so you'll notice this is faster, but it does have a totally different look. Okay. When I say faster, I'm really sewing so slow right now but it's because I'm trying to keep that even. Okay, because that's the part that for me is really hard is trying to keep that edge, it, it even from the edge is difficult. We were having a conversation this morning about how I don't get OCD about a lot of things. This is one thing I definitely do. Okay, I'm like, oh, I'm getting really, really persnickety about that. Okay. Yeah, see? There are things about that I already don't like. The zigzag is really my favorite for most things because I can hide so much in it. Okay, so 
take that pin out and I'm going to do a big rotate here. I'm going to aim back for where I was before. See if I can get those to hit. I'm going to do a little lock stitch. Clip it. All right. Okay, so now I can come back over here and I can take this off. So this works the same way it's worked for everything else. We just tear it right off. Okay, and holding down the stitches while you pull is uh, helpful. Okay, so you don't pull anything out. There we go, come on, little guy, there. Okay, and this is the, um, the water soluble, so you could, if you get like a little bit stuck in here, you can actually just sp take a little spritzer to it and it'll come right out, okay? All right, so there is the zigzag version. It's not too terrible. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. This bugs me because I can be weird about things like that, but it's okay. All right, that one's pretty good. This one leaves some room to be desired. All right, room for improvement too. Okay, there we go. And then I've got that one off. And now you can see I had a little jag right there. Oopsie. That's the part that drives me a little bit crazy is because anytime that it's not perfect, I can totally see it. All right. So for me, the zigzag is definitely the option I prefer. This is with a straight stitch and this is with a blanket stitch. Okay. And then obviously this one with, was without. You could see how this sort of fuzzes up around the edges. This is without the tearaway. And then these two have the tearaway. Okay. So you can see that there's definitely a difference in how they all sort of act with each other. All right. The back of it, this is a much better circle. Okay, and the stitching turned out just fine though with this. All right, interestingly how dark this is too is because it goes back and forth a bunch. Um, and this is the same thread. So this is a much mm, fuller stitch. All right, okay, so now we've got our front done and now we just need to stitch that baby together. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my strip. So this was my 40 inch by four inch strip and I'm just gonna sew the ends of it together real quick. Okay, make sure I had trimmed it right, yep. Okay, so now I'm just gonna sew these together and I'm gonna sew them with a quarter inch seam allowance just like everything else is. Oh, I have to switch my thread back to white. Okay, one more thread switch guys. And then I just use a spool. So I have like, a, I mean a cone. So I have a cone holder that I use because I sew a lot. So if you don't have one, they work really, really well. And I love it because you get, I don't even know, 5,000 yards or something on it. All right. Okay, so now we are back to the white. It's on a straight stitch, right? Yep, straight stitch. I'm gonna come over here, my quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna sew these two together so it becomes a big circle, okay? All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark this with a black sharpie so this is my this is half this is half this is the center basically on either side and I'm gonna mark this here and here so I have that center marked all right on my chicken face that's a weird phrase um, I'm gonna mark the same thing where the halves are okay and I could have done this at the very beginning and that would have made a lot of sense but I didn't okay so basically Right in there is my center, and right in there is my center, okay? So I'm just kind of, it's, you know, it's fairly accurate. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just have to have some place that I can mark it comparatively to. And um, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna match my centers. And this is my center top. And I'm gonna pin that. Okay, and then I'm gonna come over here 
and I'm going to pin this is my center bottom and I'm going to pin that over here. Okay. So let me know if that didn't make sense. But that basically means that I'm going to get half on this side and half on this side. And that's what I want to work it out to be. So in, like I said, in the pattern, she originally has you cut a long strip. You're just going to pin it here, start sewing, sew all the way around until they match, and then sew this seam together. I like to do it so that I know that it will fit and it doesn't get stretched along the way. Because one of the things um, you know about Cuddle is that it's a knit fabric and so it likes to stretch. Okay, so I'm going to just pin this pretty far in between so I can get them to come together and um, basically just make it fit, but I need to sort of rough fit it first. Okay, so you can see it's about every, I don't know, two and a half, three inches. And then as I come together here, I can see, okay, this, is, this might actually work. And if it doesn't, I'm going to have to move less pins because I've pinned it fairly far apart. Look at that. It totally worked. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side, and then I'll come in and pin in between so that I can, um, especially around those curves. These straight sides, it won't be such a big deal. It won't move too much. But because we have a quarter inch seam allowance, the curves especially are a little bit um, more important to, to pin well. Okay, so I'm doing the same thing here where I'm just pinning every few inches until I can get it to basically fit in. And then like I said, if I have to shift things around, I will. It's worked out pretty okay every time. I did it yesterday when I did the little, I tried to do a cow. Um, I did it out of C3 and it worked, it worked fine with that too. I had to shift a couple of times, so. So this one totally works. Okay, so now I know that that works. So I've got it basically pinned. All right, so here's my, my jelly bean shape, right? And I've got my, my middle piece pinned on, which is this edge here. Okay, so that's what I'm doing is I've sewn this, I'm sewing this piece on. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. I've sewn this shut and I'm going to leave a hole down here in the back for stuffing it later. You could leave this open if you wanted to instead. Um, you'd have to do it in slightly different order, but it would work just as well. Okay, so I'm going to pin this a little bit more and then we'll go back and sew around it. Okay, and on these curved parts, I'm going to, I'm going to pin on either side of it just to keep it um, a little bit more even on the seam allowance. I found that that helps me slightly. I also tend not to care too much if my seam allowance isn't perfect. I do care if my top stitching is perfect though. <laughs> we all have our things. Okay, get some more pins. Because as you know, it's all about the pins. Okay, so this is part, because this is heavy and full, it wants to pull away. So I'm gonna pin it right up in that edge, okay? That one's pinned in there well, and I'm gonna pin this edge in there too, okay? So that all of this stays together because it's gonna to wanna to pull apart because it's thick. Okay, so I'm gonna pin that real well right along that area where the comb is. I'll do the same thing at the bottom where the waddle is. Okay, there's a Bowen pin, came in. If you ever need a pin that's like ridiculously hard over the top, that's these Bowen pins. They are really, you can see how much thicker they are even than the Clover ones. Um, they don't bend at all. So sometimes they come in really handy. Okay. Coming around the curve, check that. Okay, here is that little spot again where we got them to match up. I'm gonna shove that back just to make sure we're getting that, okay? The pins for those are still in there. So the pin that's along here, see it's right there still, that runs and holds the stuffing back is still in there, but I'm not gonna hit it because it's far enough into the, the comb that I'm not gonna run over it. The same thing with the waddle is it's in there and it's just gonna hold that back for me, okay? So now I've got this sewn together. I'm gonna sew this one all the way around, okay? The back one, we're gonna leave a gap for sewing it together or stuffing it, okay? 
So I'm gonna start down here. I'm gonna start in the flat spot, okay, before I get to, I'll pin that together right there, it wants to move, um, before it gets over to that little waddle thing. Okay, I'm gonna get this in there. I'm going to do a little lock stitch and then it's going to need some help getting over this. You can see <laughs> how thick this is right here. So this is, you know, it's got some bulk to it. So my machine isn't going to want to just be like, oh yeah, let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to use my stiletto to get it to come over that. And I'm just going to sort of um, push it down is really what I'm doing. And then sort of pushing forward a little bit. Um, I'm not trying to shove it through. I'm just trying to get it to grab it is really what I'm doing. Okay, so one of the things that I've noticed, and we may end up doing this, is that when I sew it on this side, it lets it pull a little bit more. So you will have um, your own experience of sewing this. We'll see what I can make happen. Um, but I have found that if I sew it from the other side, this eases in a little bit better. Okay, so if you're struggling a little bit getting the the, I can't remember what they call this, not a gusset, but that sort of idea. If you're getting, having a hard time getting it to feed in smoothly, sew it on the bottom next to your feed dogs, okay? And especially because it's the cuddle and it wants to stretch and move on you. So don't ever feel bad about having to, to do that. And that's what those walking feet are sort of made for. Also, I may, if we get to the end and I've got a little bit extra on the top, I may let it just pucker just so I can show you what happens. Okay. But you'll see that if I kind of stretch it a little as it comes through, that'll, that'll um, grab down well enough. Okay. okay, and this is definitely one of those places that I'm going to come back and I'm going to check that seam because it's a small seam. I want to make sure that it actually caught everywhere. Okay, so now I'm coming back around. You can see I've got a big hump right there. That's my comb back here and it's big. Okay, so here's the, here's the flat. Here's the puff, it's a lot right there. So I'm gonna just go through this real nice and slowly and make sure it can feed through. And then we'll check it when we're done and make sure that we caught it. Okay, it's a lot of layers. Then you've got that added puff to the side, which definitely makes it a little bit more to sew. Okay, so it's not difficult, you just gotta take a little bit more care with it. Okay, and I'm just making sure that it's all flat under there. So I kind of do like a little fluff with it. I'm not really sure what the right word is, but I'm trying to just make sure it's flat. Okay, so now I can see, can you see this getting all bunched up back here? So I'm gonna let, just let that out, all right? So make sure you're not bunching up too badly. Like I said, if it gets to a point that it's bunched up a, a lot, um, it won't feed through right. And so then you're, you'll be frustrated because it's not moving the cuddle through and that's why it's not, okay? It just doesn't have anywhere to go. Okay, coming right along. We're almost back to where we started. Okay, so I'm just gonna aim for that. Go over the top, back stitch it, and take this out. All right. So now I grab my pins real fast. I've got, <laughs> I've got a few of them. Okay. All right. So now I can go ahead and take these pins out because I don't need their help anymore. Okay. Sort of massage those back into place where the stuffing needs to be. Do some trimming here. Okay. All right, so now <laughs> it's getting there, but now it looks even weirder, I think. Um, so now it's just a funky little shape. So now we're gonna sew on the back. So what I have is I've got the tail. Whew. Okay, I can look on here. My fabric is gonna go this direction because this is the back of it and this is where I want the tail to be on. Okay, so I'm gonna put, so I marked my tail where I wanted it. So I'm just gonna flip this over and pin it basically. It doesn't matter exactly where it's at, okay? Won't make any difference at all. So don't worry about being super precise with your measurements. The same with those eyes and the beak and stuff. There's no particular right, there's just where you want it to be. Okay, 
All right, so let's stitch this on so it will stay while we're sewing. And then we'll sew the back on. Okay. Okay, so now we've got the tail on. And the tail is going to go over here. The tail could go on either side. So if you, for instance, sew the tail on this side, don't worry about it. Leave it there. It's totally fine wherever it's at. So now we're going to sew these together. So I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to fold them in half, find my center, and mark that because I already marked it on my um, the in-between piece. Okay. And you can see, so I've marked this with the Sharpie, but you can see it doesn't show through the other side. So it works totally fine for that. All right, so now I'm gonna come back up here, find my mark, find my marks, put them together. Okay, and do the same exact thing that I did before, where I'm gonna mark the center here, the center at the bottom. Now, the big thing is that I need to make sure that I leave a gap, okay? I don't like leaving a gap over seams or in curvy places, okay? So I have the choice of leaving it anywhere along here that I want to. I'm actually gonna leave it up here at the side where it's a little bit less curvy, it just starts to curve. I'm gonna leave it up here because this will be easier for me to sew than the big curve here. Um, you could also do it right along the top, all right? And that would work just as well. You can do it at the bottom. Like I said, I just find it harder to hand sew that shut and, um, so I choose a different area. And as long as I do a nice ladder stitch, it'll pretty much hide in there wherever it's at. Okay. So we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna do. Some big pinning. Try to get it to feed in there. And then we can come back and fix it if we need to. Which last time I got pretty lucky, so I figured this time I'll probably have to fix it. Do you have a question? Uh, uh, roadkill. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit like roadkill now. Yeah, it's <laughs> totally. And, and, I'm, I'm glad yes, my phrase Carol, isn't stuck. And, and, and yes, Carol, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> I don't have any muscle memory for any of this, but uh, we can talk about it. Oh, we can talk about it. He's, he, yeah, he's got all the words down. It's great. Yes. Hawk has learned a lot about sewing. <laughs> A lot about cuddle. I can't remember. There was something we were talking about the other day. And I was like, wow, that was exactly right. Never having sewn this stuff. You know a lot. Yep. Thanks for, thanks for helping. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> I'm really glad he's here. Otherwise, this would be just a silly view of me from the front the entire time. Just not as, not as uh, educational by any stretch. Okay. So we will come right along here. The other thing that you can do if you want to is after you do these seams, you can totally um, zigzag them. Oh, I need to check the other one and make sure I caught it all the way too. Never did that. And definitely, like if you followed along with any of the other stuffies, um, the Kimber Bear or the uh, Ellie Elephant, you know, you want to make sure you catch those seams. Okay, so here I've got a little bit of extra. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and I need to fit it in along that edge. So I'm not sure where I went sideways on it because they're all the exact same size, so it'll fit. Um, but I'm just going to try to work it in as I go. Okay, so then what I can do is I can take out a few of these, and then I have a little bit more room to, to manipulate. Okay, so this one I'll sew it from the other side, just so you can see how that works. All right. And I'm going to pin, uh, oh, there we go. That worked out. See, I was able to even it up. Um, so now I need to figure out where I want to leave that hole. Okay, so I'm going to leave it, let's say we're going to leave a hole. Oops, I missed that. I'm going to leave it here. Okay, so I'm going to do my little two pin thing. So I know where to stop and start. Okay. So now I know I have that gap and I'm not gonna accidentally sew that shut. 
and then I'm gonna do some more pinning in between here in places so that I can get this to go smoothly so you'll see if you see on here this is the curved piece and this is a flat piece so it wants to separate here so I just have to move this up and then I'll pin it in place so anywhere that I find that they tend to want to move apart so here's another one then I'll just shove them together and then pin there all right, so one of the things that comes up in classes a lot is people tell me, but the fabric just keeps moving. And it will, it'll just keep moving. So you really have to, um, just call it, pinning it into submission. You have to make it stay. And so we just pin it where it, where it wants to move. I just do a little extra pinning and make it stay there. Okay, so don't be afraid to do that. Okay. And once you get used to sewing with this many pins, I promise you don't stab yourself so much. Took me a little while pretty good now or maybe my fingers just have some calluses I don't know being stabbed so much <laughs> okay so this part here I want to make sure that this is all my layers and this is going to stick together okay because what I don't want to happen is this to slide this way and miss this or the other if this slides the other direction which it doesn't want to and miss any of these edges so I want to make sure I catch all of that okay so I'm going to pin it real good Okay, move that pin, just get it to even out. Okay, so you saw there was like a little bit of extra there. I moved it and it's totally fine. All right, so this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew it from this side. So last time when we sewed, I sewed from this side and I manipulated it around, right? No, I did it, yeah, I did it from this side um, and sewed it from the top here. So let me make sure I caught everything, which it looks like I did. Oh, here's where we got real close. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna go back and fix that before I start sewing my other one because this seam right here is smaller than I want it to be, so I'm gonna even that up from this side. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and then we'll sew the other side. So that's how you can always tell like which side you actually sewed it on because the one that you didn't sew it on is never very even. Okay, so I'm just gonna basically even that up a little bit, take a bigger seam allowance and get back over here. Okay, and I'm not gonna back stitch or anything because I'm really just stitching over a place. It's secure enough in my mind. Okay, so now I feel better about that seam being caught. So now we're gonna sew the other side. So this time I'm gonna sew it. We're gonna start over here with my two pins and I'm gonna sew it from the top and let the, um, that middle piece, that four inch strip, let that be on the back so it will sort of feed in better. The thing you have to be careful with that is you don't wanna get any puckers on that, okay? Oops, we wanna go back. I wanna do my little L, I almost forgot. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this little guy to get it so that it'll turn in nicely when we come back around there. move that back over because I accidentally took one stitch back more than I wanted to okay so put that back in place and then just sew around okay so I'm gonna just kind of keep a, a visual check here of my layers as I'm going to try to make sure that I've gotten it okay my seam allowance will probably be bigger than a quarter of an inch and that's okay um, unlike quilting it doesn't matter so much and I like to take advantage of that <laughs> And I just try not to, to worry too much about the exact seam allowance. Mostly I just want to make sure that all the layers get caught. Okay. So like anything that's a 3D thing, underneath here, you can see this bottom piece is way out over here. I couldn't possibly just sew over the top of this. I'm going to have to manipulate it as I go. So I'll just keep be, be pulling over here and getting this to go underneath as I'm sewing so that I can get it to... To not catch that wrong I guess if I have to come back and fix it I will but I try real hard not to not to let it okay so as I come around here now I'm just gonna pull this under here so that it comes back this way okay so I'm gonna get more of that toward the back that I've already sewn and then I can keep going okay Weirdly guys, I'm hoping that it'll kind of pucker underneath there in one place and then I can show you What we do about that 
which is pretty much nothing unless it's really bad. But I'll show you why. Okay, why we why we might want to fix it and why we might not have to. Okay, and I'm just kind of keeping a little hand, this hand over here, my left hand, is really just kind of pulling against this underneath to make sure it's nice and flat, which is why I'm just pulling the pins out with my finger. I'm not reaching around and doing it. Okay, I could see a little pin in here, but I couldn't see the head at all. Do you see how it was completely hidden under there like this? All I could see was this little silver bit, and I was like, wait, there's something. Yep, there it is. Okay, get that out under there. So make sure you're not sewing over your pins. Okay, so now we're going to come around to this area that's nice and thick. So I'm going to find my stiletto. Here it is. Okay, and help this try to get smoothly around that big hump. Okay, sorry, that was a lot of hand. Um, okay, so now I've got this big hump right here. And I'm going to try to keep that down as I'm coming around. All right, so I'm gonna have to, to kind of stab it and I can actually stick it in there and then move this forward. So I'm just kind of shoving it forward a little bit. Okay, so I'm not really, it's better than, it better, shoving it forward is so much better than pulling it from the back because I'm not gonna bend the needle pushing it from the front. When you try to shove things or pull things from the back, what happens is you're pulling the fabric and as soon as the needle touches the fabric, it starts pulling the opposite direction and you end up bending your needle, which then can cause you all sorts of problems, okay? So try really hard not to, not to pull your fabric. I keep, usually when I'm sewing like straight lines and stuff, I'll keep some tension on it, but pulling is, is not good but that's why so the stiletto really works to do the opposite nicely so I'm gonna get that flat again come around okay and so now I've got my two pins here which is where I want to stop sewing so I'm gonna come up around here take my pins out okay do a little back stitch just make sure I've cemented that that seam a little bit and then I'm gonna twist this again and come off, okay? So now I'm gonna do a little double check, make sure that I've got all the seams so that if I have to come back, I can. I can go fix that before I do any stuffing because it's much more frustrating to fix that after. Thankfully, this is a pretty little project. Okay, so here we go. There's a little spot. So this, it caught it. That's my tail. And then I came around here and it got a little bit small, so I'm gonna come fix this just a little bit. Okay, make sure I caught all of that. Get a little tug, yep. Okay, so just that one little spot, we're just gonna make sure that it's, it's extra caught so that we can stuff it, it'll get, you know, smashed, played with, all of that good stuff, and that seam is not gonna come out. So you can see I'm just gonna catch it just the tiniest bit more. All right, so now I think I've got everything caught. I've left a hole, I have to find it again. There it is, okay, down here, I'm gonna actually come in here and I'm gonna cut this just a little bit around this curve, okay, on both the front and the back because what I found is those concave, I think is what that is, curves um, are a little bit more hard, like they don't wanna turn out as well. So I always wanna snip those just the tiniest bit. Okay, it's the only curves that I'll ever do. All right, and then here's the real roadkill. Like, <laughs> okay, this is, this is when it's not looking so pretty at all. All right, it has been mistreated for sure. All right, so be careful because there are still pins in it. I've left those pins in um, as I was sewing to keep the, the stuffing in check, okay, on the, that tail. So I'm gonna take that out now. So this is an area where we're just gonna be able to take our little stiletto Pull that back up, make the tail look super duper cute and fluffy and not get any of those weird little edges, okay? You can do it around all around the, 
the whole edge of the pillow too because these little places where it gets stuck in if you come back and fluff them up it makes a world of difference in my opinion okay all right so now we've got a little chicken okay so now i'm just going to stuff him and then i'm going to sew that hole up shut all right so let's do that real quick and then um i'll tell you oh so there's a couple of things let me tell you about um before i forget and while you watch me stuff because it's not very exciting um so i'm gonna stuff this guy but what i wanted to tell you is that we have um a group a, i love cuddle group is what it's called on facebook so since you're here, you can easily go over and find that. A bunch of you joined last week and that was awesome. So thank you and thank you for sharing your projects. If you work on any of the Sew Together um, Tuesday projects like the little Kimber Bear or we did the elephant, what else have we done? We did a blanket, we did, um, I can't remember. It, there's been a bunch of projects now. And now this little chicken or the little jelly bean faces, if you do any of those, please post them on there so we can see them because I really like um, sharing them and seeing what you guys do and what your fabric choices are. Um, as well as it gives you just a place to be able to uh, ask questions or talk to other people, see what other people are doing with the fabric because there's all sorts of things that can be and are done with it. Okay, so the I Love Cuddle group is awesome. Then we also have um, all of these videos, all of our Sew Together um, Tuesday videos are put up on YouTube as well. So if you subscribe there, you'll get noticed when we do them, um, when we do more of them. So after we are allowed to... Um, to get back on the road, once I can travel out to stores again, we'll be doing more videos that will be um, like tutorial videos, but they won't be live ones. So at that point, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you'll get notification when those are done as well. Okay, and we have a bunch of other videos that are up on YouTube. So make sure you check that out. We're also on Instagram and Pinterest and all of that good stuff. Okay, so check us out. And um, if you don't subscribe to our newsletter, if you do that, then you'll get noticed too of what we're doing and um, what we're making each week and what you'll need for it, okay? So you'll notice as I'm doing this that I'm separating this stuff a lot more. If you don't separate the polyfill as you stick it in, it just ends up in big clumps in there. It tends to clump more than I like anyway, but um, it definitely clumps if you don't pull it apart, okay? So make sure that you give it a little, I don't even know, shredding, some fluffing. Okay. All right. So get this full. Here's the chopstick that comes in it every time. Okay. Help you shove it down there into the hard spots. This one doesn't have any spots that are hard to get it into, so I won't need it. But I've definitely used it like for the elephant. Okay. She also has on her pat in the pattern. She has like a little heart pocket you can put on the back, so you could make this into a cute little tooth fairy pillow if you wanted to. Put that little pocket on the back keep little you know teeth from babies in there that sounds weird <laughs> but you know what I mean tooth fairy pillows are cute sounds weirder when we talk about it um, all right so we're gonna get this shoved in there I'll get a couple more in I can feel the difference dramatically in how fluffy the two are so it's kind of I'm glad that I tried this I'll, I'll talk it through in just a second um, because they are different and really depending on what you want to do it's nice to know what different um, results will happen I guess okay so let's see I think there's one more good fluff in there so this is gonna be definitely less than half a bag probably about a third of a bag is what I'm using for this guy okay and it's still this is a denser it's a denser fiber fill than the royal silk which is why I thought it might be good for this project Okay, ta-da, okay, there we go. I don't think I have a needle and thread here. Um, yeah, well, I guess you're not gonna watch me hand sew it shut, which is super easy, it's just a ladder stitch again. Okay, so we just do a ladder stitch across the back. So this is one of those things, like if I um, don't have this, sometimes I'll trim, like I don't like this, sometimes I'll trim these off, but you can also just fluff it out of the way. So, um, Talk about how the L stitches on your hole make it easier for the... Oh, for the, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so maybe I'll find thread. Um, so you can see here that this wants to roll in. And basically what happened is it rolls in because I did those little L stitches. So it rolls in about a quarter of an inch. And what happens is I can just pop this 
and now it's suddenly folded in at the at the edge where I want it to. You can't feel this, but I can feel in there that there's about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now at this point, I could sew this shut. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this the way that people always ask me, can you? And you can zigzag this on the machine. Okay, and I'll show you why I hand stitch it because you can do this on the machine and it will totally stay. I just don't think it's as cute. Okay, so I'm gonna switch this over to a zigzag. I usually do five five, like when we're doing the binding and all of that stuff, but I don't actually want it to be that big this time. Um, so I'm gonna bring it down to a three and a half and a three and a half. Okay, so that's a, a significant zigzag without being huge. Also, cleaning up pins. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shove this underneath. Oh, you know what? I might have to pin this the other way. That's what I'm gonna do. So pin this from the other side and then all of that bulk can sit up top. That'll be easier. Okay. So see, it's possible, but not easy. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to stick this under here. And I'm going to take one stitch, two stitch. And now I'm going to do a lock stitch on that side because I want it to hold. Okay. And I'm going to kind of just keep this pulled so that my seam, the folds are right over there together. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do a little lock stitch. I'm going to hope I got it all. Okay. If not, I could go fix it. Oh, there we go. All right. So there you go. So you could totally do it. Okay, from the front, can't see it at all. Looks great, don't even notice it, okay? So if you want a really quick finish, that absolutely works. On the back, it looks, just looks like he's got a little, a little funky haircut or something, okay? So you could come in here, like we've done before. You fluff up your stitches, hides it better. I could just never get it quite as smooth there, okay, as I could otherwise. So like on here, I'm trying to think of, I think that's where I stitched it. It's flat, okay, but it keeps a nice, like, smooth edge to it. Whereas when I do it with the zigzag, it it just leaves it a little bit funky. Like I said, though, it's the back side of it. Who cares, okay? So these are the two um, different ones. Let me see. So I don't know if you can tell the difference. This is definitely more solid than this one is. So this one I can like squish a lot more. This one doesn't squish as much. All right, so that's the difference. So this one was the regular polyfill. This was the royal silk polyfill. So generally, and this one I did all with the blanket stitch. Um, and this one I tried not to, I just stuck it down, but you can see that when I traced it with the Sharpie, it left a little edge on here. Okay, so I wasn't super happy with that. Every time I do, when, do one of these projects, I learn something new and I'm like, okay, so don't use the Sharpie on that because it didn't work. I wasn't able to hide it. Most of the time I can hide the Sharpie. So this is all with the blanket stitch, which I prefer. Okay, this is with the zigzag that she recommends in the pattern. This is the zigzag with the tearaway. And this was a blanket stitch without tearaway. Okay. Straight, straight stitch. Straight stitch. What did I, did I say zigzag? Okay, straight stitch, obviously a straight stitch, sorry. Um, yes, so this is the straight stitch like she talks about in the pattern, all right? Um, so that's the two of them. Uh, next week, we're gonna be working on, I did some, I don't have the finished here yet, guys, because I've been practicing. So um, if you have been doing the, um, oh, our phone. If you've been doing the Sew Together Tuesdays with us um, for a little while, then you might remember that there was, um, I can't remember what we were making. I think it was the Kimber Bear one of the days. And we got this knock, knock, knock during the middle of the video. And we were like, huh, okay, just keep going. Well, anyway, that was when my embroidery machine showed up. So I have a baby lock embroidery machine, a Pathfinder. We're going to talk about that a little bit next week. And um, I'll show you how that works. But what I've been doing is doing some embroidery because we're going to do a little sleep mess next week. So I'll show you how to do it with embroidery and without. Okay, we'll do some little applique stuff too. But this is what I've been working on are these little um, butterflies. So this has been fun. So if you have an embroidery machine, we'll talk a little bit about this. I'm gonna practice all week. So I've got some more answers for you and I've been talking to some other embroiderers. Um, 
but we're gonna make little sleep masks out of this. So I'm really excited for that. So if you're into embroidery, this is a great place to do it. We're also gonna do, um, I'm gonna do one that has a little bit of applique on it too. So we can just talk about it, but that'll be a little sleep mask we're doing. So it's a great little project that'll go with your throw blanket that you made from a few weeks ago. All right, so that's next week, Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. This week we have a winner and um, the winner is Tony McCormick Warlet of Keller, Texas. Is that right? <laughs> was a lot of names. Tony um, from Keller, Texas. So you're the winner. We, um, if you will reach out to us, send us a um, direct message on the page, then I will get back with you and we will chat about which animal you want to make. So if you want to make the chick, I'll send you all the stuff to make the chick. If you want to make one of the other ones from the pattern, we'll get you those fabrics um, instead. Okay, so you get to make your choice of your barnyard buddy. So and then I will send you the pattern and all of the other little bits and pieces that you need to make that thing go together. Okay, so any questions that I need to answer? We're good? All right, well, congratulations. Um, I'm really excited that you won. Thanks so much for coming, everybody. And um, until next week, happy sewing. Bye.